Hello friends, my name is Kumar and welcome back to our channel Kumar Programming. Today I am going to start a series on Docker and why not. Nowadays Docker is becoming very popular throughout our IT industries irrespective to the technologies. So might be you are working on .NET, Angular, Node, React, Python or Java. Each and every technology is needing Docker, right? And if you are having the knowledge about the Docker, then chances for your selection in the interview process is going to be increased and your CV is going to be shortlisted out of the other candidates very quickly. So in this video, we are going to cover each and everything about Docker. After completing this series, you would be having a complete knowledge about the Docker and you will not be required to watch any other video on this. So mainly we are going to cover about what is Docker and why we use Docker and then we will talk about Docker architecture and after that we will learn how to create a Docker file from our application and then how we can create the image and from image how we can create the container and once it will come to manage for the multiple container altogether then we will learn about the Docker compose and also we will learn how to create a volume and mount that volume to our container and after that we will learn about how to integrate our docker with our ec2 instances and finally we are going to learn about docker swarm and we are not going to only learn about the concepts in spite of that we are going to have the practical demonstration for each and every concepts right so now let's see what all the topics that we are going to cover so mainly first of all we will cover about the docker introduction where we are going to discuss about the docker and why we use docker and what are the benefits we have the docker right and then after that we will do the installation and do the necessary setup for our docker and after that we will discuss about the docker architecture in detail we will see what is docker client docker host and what is docker registry and how exactly it works internally right and after that we will see how we can create a docker file from our code and then how we can create the image from the docker file and then how container can be created from our image right and then after that we will see all the basic commands that is being used inside our docker and once we would be completing about the container and we are going to manage the containers all together then we are going to learn about the docker compose right and also we will learn about how to create the volume for a container and how we can mount that volume to the container right and also we will learn about docker network and then we will learn about how we can push our image to the docker registry and how we can pull the images from our docker registry right and after that we will see how docker can be integrated with our ci cd pipeline i'll take a couple of examples from jenkin and github actions right and then after that we are going to see the integration of docker inside our ec2 instances and last but not the least we are going to learn about docker swarm where we will learn about how to create a master and worker node and how we can do the orchestration in between worker and master node so friends if you have not subscribed this channel please subscribe it and press the bell icon so we'll get the notification of all of my upcoming videos on this series so without much more wasting time on it let's start so first of all let's understand what docker is but before seeing that definition of docker we will see few basic things that is required to understand the docker so now suppose that you are a developer and you have created an application and that application could be in any technology like .NET, Angular, React, Node or Java. It could be anything, right? And then that application is running on your local machine absolutely fine. Okay. So now the next step that you will build that application and you will put that build to somewhere in the repository, right? So once your build image is available to the repository, then as a dev, right, as a dev, your task is completed. The next step, we have to take this build and we have to deploy in our dev environment where test the integration testing. And once the developer will satisfy, then they are going to deploy in our SIT. SIT is nothing where testers are going to test the application, right? So once it is done with the SIT environment, then it goes to the UAT. UAT is basically user acceptance testing environment where some of the actual users are testing the applications, right? Once we get the sign off from UAT, then it goes to the production environment where our application goes live, right? So now 
how we have to deploy this application to all of the environment so now operation teams comes into the picture and then the whole devops life cycle comes right so what they say that we are going to take care of the complete deployment so what they are going to do they are going to create a physical server right and what they are having in the physical server they are having the hardware right in the hardware they are having cpu hard disk ram right and on top of that they are having the operating system suppose that you have created an application on windows so they are going to have a windows server over here and then they are going to install all the dependency which you have on your local machine suppose that you are creating application on dotnet so they have to install here dotnet framework dotnet runtime and all the other dependency okay and once everything is installed on this operating system then they are going to execute the application on top of it and suppose that we have another application api in backend so that is might be you have developed in dotnet core so that is going to be deploy also here on the same operating system so now your application is both of the application is running fine so devops team is going to configure this complete infrastructure for all the environment dev it uat and prod right and this was happening since long time but there were some major problems so what what was those problems so the application that you have configured over here in this environment was a technology dependent and infrastructure dependent right suppose that tomorrow we are going to have a other operating system like linux or ubuntu so that application is not going to work on those operating system so this was a big problem other problem was it was quite hard and time consuming task to recreate this infrastructure for all the environment okay so if if it's configured on dev then again we have to move the same configuration to the site environment right because we have to configure each and everything on other environments as well so that was a very time consuming also it was having a compatibility and dependency issues so might be here at the developer machine they have some dependency right they have worked on node 16 and this infrastructure is having node 18 so some of the functionality can break right so a lot of dependency issues were there also or might be suppose that here we have application 1 and application 2 one application is running on node 16 and we are required to other application to run on node 18 but in this operating system we have installed node 16 so this app 2 cannot be run on this operating system so that was the limitation right and the other limitation was the operation team were unable to maintain the multiple version so if they want to execute one application in node 16 and another application in node 18 it was not possible in this infrastructure right so those were the limitations so in order to resolve all those issues there is a concept came as a virtualization right so what exactly happening inside the virtualization they said like we are going to take a physical server inside this physical server we are going to have operating system right and on top of this operating system we are going to install a hypervisor right so this hypervisor is going to create some virtual machine so this hypervisor is going to create virtual machine on top of these operating system okay and these virtual machines were having their own operating system and all the dependency for the required application right so application one which is um, which is having node 16 so it's going to run over here and application 2 which is having node 18 it's going to run on vm2 right so our problem got solved like technology and infrastructure dependent and it doesn't matter like what see because these these virtual machines are having their own operating system here we can run on windows and on virtual machine 2 we, we can run on linux right so our technology and infrastructure dependency were resolved by using our uh, virtualization and that virtualization is achieved by hypervisor and it was easy to configure over here comparatively with our earlier process right but still it was time consuming to recreate the environment right because like creating a virtual machine it was around more than six hours seven hours and do all the installation on this virtual machine it was a quite time consuming task right but yes uh, the third one the compatibility and dependency issues were got resolved right because each and every we are going to install everything on this virtual machine and for the application one and on this virtual machine for the application two but still this virtual machine was not able to have the multiple version right so if you want to run the application 1 version 1 and up application 1 version 2 right so we need to create multiple virtual machines one virtual machine and version 1.1 for another virtual machine right so once we were creating multiple versions and we once we were creating the multiple virtual machines then also it was creating 
some of more problems right what was those like it was taking huge resources consumptions right so it it was it was taking a lot of memory lot of hard disk lot of cpus right whenever we are increasing our virtual machines so it was not scalable i mean like once we are scaling horizontally once we are scaling our virtual machines then we have to make it strong right our 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 host our host server should be very very strong right and once any vm is getting crashed then it was quite obvious that we are getting data loss completely from that virtual machine right so those were all the problems we were facing on the virtual machine now there is another concept came into the picture what is that so they said like we are going to take a physical server on that we are going to install an operating system and then after that we are going to install docker right docker came as a superhero and they said we are going to solve all these problems and what we are going to do rather than creating the virtual machine we are going to create small small containers very lightweight containers so how these containers are differ from the virtual machines these containers are not having any operating system first of all okay they are having the all the files which is required to run the application all the dependency and run time environment and those containers are running on this docker and these containers are isolated they are not interfering to each other so all these problems are getting resolved with the container so what we have to do we just have to install docker on each and every environment and also install docker on developer environment right and then our most of the problem is getting solved and now so we are not dependent on any technology here we can run our dotnet application node application angular java whatever application we have we can run it okay on top of docker and easy to fast recreate environment okay here in virtual machine it was taking around like 8 hours so in container it's it's 5 minutes job to just create the environment and our compatibility and dependency all issue also got resolved because each and every dependency is going to be run inside the container only so we can run our node 16 application on container 1 and node 18 application on container 2 and we can run the multiple version of the same application on different different container and these containers are very lightweight so now the question comes how docker will do that okay so what they will do here developer is going to create a docker file on their code and from that docker file here docker engine this docker engine will take this docker file and they are going to create an image okay and that image is going to push on image repository that is our docker hub right once this image is pushed on this docker hub this is available for all the environments if any other team members is joining the team they also can pull the image from there and they can run it okay so the only thing just we need to pull the this image okay pull the image inside this docker once we pull this image inside this docker docker is going to run this image to make it container okay image is just a blueprint it's very lightweight it, it's a kind of class right it's a blueprint of the container we just create the image and then once it come to the docker docker engine there is a engine inside the docker that docker engine create a container for so in that way we can execute multiple images we can pull the multiple images from our image repository docker hub and we can create the multiple container inside the docker and similarly we have to do for all the other environment and we we don't have to worry about what is the operating system installed on our physical server right i'll let you know more about the docker how docker is interacting with our operating system kernel memory and how exactly this docker work inside but as of now just try to understand at a very high level how docker works okay i hope that you understood uh, some of the concept over here like what is docker what is docker file what is docker image now it would be very easy to understand the definition so now let's see what the docker definition we have here so docker docker is an open source tool that allow you to package an application and its dependency into a single image and this image can run on any machine which has docker installed regardless of underlying operating system also docker is a containerization platform which contain containers right and containers are isolated environment that contain everything that an application needs to run right what all the things we required application code right and all the dependency and the runtime environment like suppose that we are having a framework then dotnet framework runtime environment right 
and if you have java then java runtime environment all those informations that we are going to pack all together inside a docker image which makes it easier to deploy application to the different environment without having to worry about the compatibility issues easy and that's the magic we have with the docker isn't it and let's see what all the benefits that we have once we have implemented the docker then it's then we are not worrying about what technologies is what technology is being used by the application and what are the infrastructure we have so we are not dependent on technology and in infrastructure anymore right and it's portability right because we have a very simple image very small image that is pushed already in the docker hub and that can in that image can be used on any of the environment and that can create a container so it, it was it was quite easy portability is quite easy and creating the environment resolving the compatibility and dependency issues so since all the code dependency runtime environment everything is packed inside the image and it's running everything is running inside a isolated container so it was resolving our compatibility and dependency issues as well and it's also maintaining the multiple version of an application that was a huge achievement right and it's lightweight containers are lightweight right if you boot a virtual machine it took around like more than 5 minutes or 6 minutes but in order to start the container it took around only 3 to 4 seconds it's a huge difference we have right and it's only consuming the required memory required resources from our host server so there was a quite huge significant improvement by using our in the term of containerization so friends i hope that you understood about the docker and and what are the benefits of using docker and how we can achieve the containerization environment using our docker in our next video we are going to install our docker in our local machine and do all the required configuration so friend now this comes to the end of this video and i hope that this was useful to you and if you have liked this video then please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe this channel for more videos and don't forget to press the bell icon so you will get the notification of all of my upcoming videos on this series so i'll see you in my next video till then take care and keep learning